we finally arrived at our stop, the infamous neuromuscular junction. At this station, we'll walk through the sequence of events that takes an action potential traveling down a motor neuron and turns it into a muscle contraction. So, step out. Stand clear of the closing doors. And let's get started. A neuromuscular junction is the synapse between motor neurons and skeletal muscle. In other words, it's where the motor neuron, depicted by this electric train, comes together and communicates with the skeletal muscle, hence the wicked skeletal muscle patterned brick on this building. The neuromuscular junction is divided into two parts. The first part is the presynaptic terminal, which releases acetylcholine and is represented by this businessman disembarking at the terminal with a six pack of acetyl coolers. I too like to kick my feet up and relax with a cold acetyl cooler at the end of the day. The second part of the neuromuscular junction is the postsynaptic membrane, also known as the motor or muscle end plate, which contains nicotinic receptors, specifically NM or N1 receptors, that bind acetylcholine and act as sodium potassium ion channels. This supersized outlet cover plate, symbolizing the motor or muscle end plate, and the sketchy smoker standing next to it for the nicotinic receptors should remind you of this. In fact, we should keep an eye on that sketchy smoker, but before we move on, there are a few more things to check out at the presynaptic terminal. You'll recall that acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter used at the neuromuscular junction, but how is it made? Well, an enzyme called choline acetyltransferase uses acetyl-coenzyme A, acetyl-CoA, and choline in the presynaptic terminal to form acetylcholine, which is then stored in synaptic vesicles. This process is shown here by this refreshing billboard on the train advertising acetyl-cola with a cool lime flavor. When an action potential is conducted down the motor neuron, the depolarization of the presynaptic terminal opens voltage-gated calcium channels, causing calcium to rush down its electrochemical gradient into the presynaptic terminal. This is depicted by this carton of calcium ice cream being loaded onto the train. This intake of calcium then causes exocytosis, where vesicles containing acetylcholine fuse with the plasma membrane and empty their contents into the synaptic cleft. That's why our uh, disembarker has tripped, losing a precious acetyl cooler that is now rolling towards our sketchy smoker. And, of course, our smoker has picked up the acetyl cooler because they're delicious and highly addictive, but also because acetylcholine diffuses across the cleft to the postsynaptic membrane and binds to the NM or N1 nicotinic receptor, which also acts as a sodium and potassium ion channel. When acetylcholine binds, the receptor undergoes a conformational change, and the channel opens, allowing the flow of ions down their electrochemical gradients. In this case, potassium flows out of the cell and sodium flows into the cell, causing the depolarization of the postsynaptic membrane potential. That's why that scoundrel is trading salty peanuts for potassium-rich bananas through a hole in the wall. That is some illicit contraband. Very, very sketchy. But this other guy over here in a trench coat looks innocent enough with his decaf coffee, so... Oh, good gracious, that's not a guy. That's three mini kids in disguise. They're a reminder that when acetylcholine from each synaptic vesicle binds to nicotinic receptors, they produce what is called a miniature end plate potential, MEPP. Individually, these are not enough to cause depolarization. However, when enough MEPPs summate, they produce an end plate potential, EPP that depolarizes the specialized muscle end plate. Or, in the case of these kids, when enough of them can pass as an adult and buy coffee. Decaf, of course. This depolarization in the specialized motor end plate is then spread by local currents to adjacent muscle fibers, which are depolarized and produce action potentials that lead to muscle contraction. Just like you'd tense up a little if a stack of rascals spilled hot coffee on you. Uh, it seems like the neuromuscular junction attracts all sorts of unsavory characters, as we can see towards the bottom at this dumpster here. After depolarization, the end plate potential is rapidly terminated when acetylcholine on the muscle end plate is degraded by acetylcholinesterase, producing acetate and choline. Unlike acetate, 
choline can be returned to the presynaptic terminal for new acetylcholine synthesis, which is why this hooligan is throwing cool limes back at the train. And that's everything you need to know about the neuromuscular junction and its black market peanut banana exchange. Ugh, all this food and drink talk is making me hungry. But before I mix up this lime vinaigrette, let's take one last look back at what we've learned. The neuromuscular junction is the synapse between motor neurons and skeletal muscle. It's divided into two parts, the presynaptic terminal that releases acetylcholine and the postsynaptic membrane, or motor end plate, which contains nicotinic receptors that acetylcholine binds to. Acetylcholine is synthesized from acetyl-CoA and choline by choline acetyltransferase in the presynaptic terminal. Action potentials conducted down the motor neuron depolarize the presynaptic terminal, opening voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium uptake causes acetylcholine to be released into the synaptic cleft, where it binds to nicotinic receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. These receptors act as sodium-potassium ion channels that open upon binding, leading to depolarization. The acetylcholine from each synaptic vesicle produces a miniature end plate potential, which summates with other MEPPs to produce an end plate potential and the depolarization of the motor end plate. This depolarization then spreads via local currents to adjacent muscle fibers, producing action potentials that generate muscle contractions. The end plate potential is terminated when acetylcholinesterase breaks down acetylcholine at the motor end plate into choline and acetate. Choline can then be returned to the presynaptic terminal for new acetylcholine synthesis. Now, if, uh, if you're interested, I know a guy who knows a guy that can get a real good price on some misplaced peanuts, as well as some bananas of questionable provenance. What? I swear it's legit. It's a good deal. It's a good deal.